I guess we can start by now. Uh, okay, dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity in thanking you all uh, for joining us today in our franchise talk uh, webinar. And would like to thank franchise talk team uh, headed by Madame Sophie and the team with her in partnership with TGFM and Franco in organizing this platform that links opportunity to your doorstep. Not to mention as well, the ability to highlight uh, and or focus on brand opportunities, such as the brands we have with us today. Today, we will focus on two major and amazing Japanese concepts. Joining us today uh, is Mr. Felipe Consalves, who is the CEO of Yamamoto Takuchi Investment Corporation heading the brand of Asari as a lifestyle retail uh, brand, which is an inspirational brand from Japan. And with us as well, Mr. Oji Nakazawa, who is the corporate officer of Chateaurais Japan, a well-known Japanese patisserie brand. I would like to as well present myself. My name is Imad Sharafuddin. I am heading the, uh, uh, I'm the CEO and chairman of Frankfurt, uh, Frankfurt Middle East. Uh, we actually do franchising. It's a very well known uh, consultancy firm. Uh, would you like me to present a bit about Frankfurt? So I'm gonna share with you the screen. Frankfurt. Uh, surely, uh, as a company, it started in 1976. It is one of the oldest franchise consultancy firm out there. Uh, we have managed to franchise more than 16,000 clients uh, in the world. In the Middle East, we've been operating for nearly 18 years, and we have over 1,000 clients that we developed their franchise program. Uh, all the way from clinics to funerals and anything in between. Uh, as a business, we are present in 55 countries. We do have 23 regional offices across the globe, all the way from United States to Latin America, to Europe, to the Middle East, and across Asia and several other markets. Some of our clients, just to give you a brief of our client uh, database and client that we have managed to work on their franchise program, as you can see, is a list that varies not only uh, in, in FMB or in retail, it is a list that it is across all different sectors. So all the way, like we said, from clinics to, uh, uh, to FMB businesses, to gas stations, to, clean, uh, to uh, pharmacies, to uh, convenience stores, and you name it, and so many other. This is a brief list of some of our clients that we have managed to work with in the Middle East, and as well, some of our international clients, such as McDonald, KFC, and several big, big brands. Uh, moving forward, our mission has always been is to purely spread the franchise culture. We believe that franchising is the next big thing uh, in terms of development. We believe that businesses do need a franchise in order for them to succeed. We believe that businesses as well do need franchise for them to expand. Uh, so our mission has always been to spread the franchise culture. Uh, our uh, vision is more related to the program development that we uh, normally tend to uh, provide to our clients. So it's all focusing on developing a high sustainable, high uh, developed structure for any uh, businesses in order for them to be able to expand. Now, what do we do? I will give you a brief about uh, Frank of different services and the deliverables. We as a company, we work on different fronts. The first thing we normally tend to help client to assess their business, to be able to assess it from uh, a business, whether they, are, they have the viability for them to become a successful franchise business. So we help them in doing the diagnosis process for their business. Once this diagnosis is done and we have filtered that, yes, this business do 
have all the capabilities for them to be a successful franchise business, surely tapping into a checklist that we normally tend to do, which we look at their financial viability, we look at their know-how transfer, we look at their marketability of the business, and surely their legal structure. So once this checklist is done, then we tap into developing their franchise business. Now, when we develop a business, we concentrate on four major pillars. And the reason why I say pillars is like building a, a tower. In order for you to build it, you need to concentrate on the pillars that hold that tower. So our aim is to build those pillars from a different perspective, uh, all the way from strategic, as you can see, to legal, to operations, and to marketing. Now, when we help a client to build their strategy, we start all the way from building their goals and objectives, their plan, their expansion plan, where they want to be in five years, how they want to achieve this, uh, this expansion, what type of a formats they're going to be selling, how they're going to sell it, to whom they're going to sell it, who's going to be their potential uh, franchisee, what type of a criteria they need to hold in order for them to become their franchisee as a partner. Uh, we do their financial uh, structure. We do their franchise feasibility study and business plan in order for us to come up with their fee analysis, all the way from their franchise fee to their royalty fee, to their advertising fee and marketing fund. Surely as well, we help them in developing their internal uh, uh, resources in terms of an organization and structure that will assist them uh, to sell uh, their franchise, but then again, to assist them in always providing the constant support and constant supervision to their franchisees. Uh, surely as well, we work on their legal structure. Legal structure meaning we help them in developing a full-fledged uh, legal structure that allows them to uh, sell their business without any liabilities on the company, whether it is the company that owns the trademark or the company that's going to be acting as a franchisor and the link between them. Then once this is done as the first pillar, what we call it the strategic planning, then we move to something called the franchise legal documentations and legal agreements, the drafting. This is where we uh, create and develop the agreements needed to the client strategy and development. So based on the client goals and objectives, if they are aiming to sell certain number of units across certain regions, they might have different legal agreements. And uh, this is something a bit uh, 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 strange to people in the sense that I don't think a lot of us know what type of an agreement they are out there because there is more than 22 type of franchise agreement in which I'm pretty sure a lot of people they don't know about. So this agreement will only be established the time we decide the goals and the objective of the client. So here we start drafting their uh, agreement, help them in developing their letter of intent, help them develop even their uh, loan agreement or supply agreement or even management agreement in certain cases. So anything pertaining legal agreement, we assist the client to develop it and we surely do it all in-house. Uh, on top of all this, we help them developing the third uh, uh, major deliverable and third uh, pillar, which is the franchise operations manual. As you may know, franchising is selling someone a trademark. But then again, you're not only selling them the trademark, you're selling them the know-how transfer. And in order for you to sell this know-how transfer, you need to have a full-fledged documented operation manual that any person is able, is able to read, will be able to develop and operate. So for our uh, sake of the, doing the operations manual, we try to document every single angle of the client operation from the time they uh, secure a location to the time they construct it, to the time they, they start hiring the team, uh, to the time they train them, to the time they open the stores, to the time they sell to the client. So every single angle of the business needs to be documented in order for us to transfer this know-how to other franchisees. So this is something we call it the franchise operations manual, which is the third pillar of our deliverable. The fourth and uh, final deliverable in our program development, it's called the franchise marketing plan. Now, 
we have established the strategy, the goals, the objective. We have established the legal agreement. We have established the know-how transfer. The only thing is missing now is to sell the business. So what we need to do is to create a marketing plan that will allow us to sell based on our goals and objective and strategy moving forward. So we'll align the goal, the marketing plan to our strategy, and we try to achieve as much sales as we can in terms of franchise. By this as well, we will do something called the franchise marketing collateral. So anything pertaining franchise uh, brochure, anything pertaining to their marketing uh, materials, to their frequently asked questions that they provide to any investor, to the franchisee evaluation form, and so many other uh, uh, de deliverables that needs to be provided in the marketing plan, such as franchise sales tools. Uh, uh, now, once the strategy is done and the legal agreement is developed and the franchise operations manual is done, surely as, as well as the marketing plan, now we are ready to start selling our business and, and starting converting lead into potential franchisees. Now, this project, normally it's a quite intense project and it requires minimum four to six months to develop all the way from the strategy to uh, uh, the marketing up to the point we start selling our franchise business. Surely once this program is finalized, uh, Francorp has different uh, businesses under it. So it has the Francorp consultancy in which what we just talked about, the full program development. But then again, we have something called Francorp International. Francorp International is the uh, uh, sister company of Francorp uh, consultancy, which help client to sell their business across the whole globe. But due to the fact that we are present international uh, across different markets, we are always uh, certain that we are able to assist client in expanding in these markets. So that's why we created something called Franco International that will allow us to sell businesses across all the international markets. With this, I would like to thank you for giving me the time uh, to talk about Francorp and to give you a brief about who we are and about our different services. Thank you. Now I will uh, hand over to Mr. Philip Consalves. He is the CEO of Yamanote Takuchi Investment Corporation which is the company that heads and lead Asari retail lifestyle uh, brand. Mr. Felipe, your speech, please. Thank you. Hi, Emma. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us here. I'll stop my... Let me see. One second. Okay. In the next uh, 15 minutes, I'll talk about uh, Azari, that is a concept from Shibuya, Tokyo. Uh, we'll talk about our company overview, Azari concept, our commitment, our brands, our products, and the layout stores, and of course, the Azari franchise, uh, financial details. Asari was founded in 2016. Uh, it's owned by Yamamoto Takeoshi Corporation in Japan, uh, own 80% uh, The other 20% uh, belongs to Japan United Industries. That is 50 factories from Japan uh, with factories in Japan and factories out uh, of Japan in South Korea, uh, China, and Bangladesh. And the licensor for the Texas reasons, uh, we chose uh, Hong Kong, the Yamamoto Takeoshi Corporation in Hong Kong, that is the worldwide licensor for the concept Azari. As I told, uh, it was uh, uh, founded in 2016, uh, became really a, a very fast, uh, stylish and unique concept. Uh, in 2019, uh, the concept was, uh, was sold, uh, was bought by Yamamoto Takeoshi. 
uh, in 2021, taking a little bit advantage of the of the virus uh, pandemic, uh, we introduce and we improve our concept to a, um, a coffee store and bookstore uh, where people they can buy the 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 the, the, the old unique uh, products that are designed by us by our designers and produced in our factories. And they can at the same time have a coffee by a croissant, a sandwich or any kind of pastry from Japan and from uh, other parts of the world. We have chosen now to, 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 to sell products from uh, Spain, Portugal uh, and France and Italy. That is our main products for, for, the, um, for, the, for the coffee and store concept. At the same time, inside of the store, we have uh, of the concept. If, you, if our customer becomes a member, we have a nutritionist that will follow up with the with the with the customer to create a menu, a special menu for people that want to 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 lose weight, to have a better health. Uh, this nutritionist will be uh, live with our customers every 15 days. So after that, the customer goes to to our stores. And they just pick up the the, the menu that uh, are directly made by for for, for them. Uh, at the same time, inside of the, the the store, people they can study, they can have meetings. We have a um, printing corner where people they can they can print any kind of documents. So it's a, a very complete concept that we have today. So people can enjoy not only buying the best products from Japan, uh, but as well to enjoy a little bit of uh, culture from other countries. We believe that uh, the partnerships must be in a win-win so solution, and we are always ready to, to, to do that with our partners. So uh, we are focused in being successful with our partners, especially giving profitability in our business. That's what we, we, we aim today, and that's what is happening with all the partners that we have at the moment. Our brands, that is one of the best parts of this concept, we own different brands that are only exclusive for uh, Azari stores. So we have Fashion Streetwear, so so Tokyo Society. We have Premium Streetwear, Tokyo Social Club. This is one of our premium brands, probably one of the most famous that we have, uh, Azuru, that is more uh, directly for, for premium fashion uh, for women. Kanketsu, that is our uh, premium for beauty, where we have perfumes and all related to, to bad products like bad bombs, uh, shampoos, uh, conditioners, conditioners, and all this, what, what you can imagine for, 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 for beauty. Um, then we have the Kozu and Washi, that is for home appliance, uh, Okada and Co. And and bad men that is directly only for men beauty products for men especially for beer uh, hair and body at the, we have as well two new uh, brands in our in our concept one is the azari radio that is now live where we we are live from tokyo and live from hong kong and soon we'll be live from in some countries in Europe and we, we hope from Dubai as well. So this radio is the radio that everybody can listen, but at the same time, uh, it's the, the, the music that will pass inside of our stores. Uh, in June, we're gonna launch the Azari TV where we're gonna talk a little bit about the culture, not only from Japan, but as well from other countries like France, Italy, uh, China and so on. So all, all everybody will we will will watch about culture in our in our um, in our channel, and we have the pet products Aruto, that is uh, very famous as well inside of our in our stores. Our products. So we have very unique and very beautiful design, very clean, uh, very Japanese, of course. Uh, from fashion to stationery to gadgets, uh, all designed by us and produced by, by our factories. So home appliance, kitchen appliance, lifestyle. These are some of the products that we sell inside of the, the stores. Uh, the beauty products, of course, the books we buy from, from, some, uh, from some companies that is too good for us. Um, and for the coffee products, as you can see, we have products from Portugal, from France, from Spain, and of course from Japan. All our products are allowed certified. So, and 
the coffee will be focused as well in the in the the bubble tea, the Japanese bubble tea, uh, in our stores. Our layout is very clean layout, very minimalist. Uh, we give a focus to our products, so the store is has two colors. One is white, another one is the the wood color, and the products brings the happiness inside of the stores. All the stores have a, a, a meeting room where people they can sit, they can read, they can study, they can make some meetings, they can print, uh, they can have a coffee, they can have, enjoy a, a great moment inside of the store. Regarding the Azari franchise, uh, we mainly we do uh, joint ventures, so we can do a joint venture with any partner between 10% to 50%. So we are willing to invest until 50% uh, in the in the business. Uh, the, may, the the minimum that we request for outlet is 150 square meters. Uh, we can go until 600 square meters because today we have much more SKUs than one year ago. So today we can make 600 square meters, 700 square meters. Uh, we charge uh, 25,000 euros uh, for one unit, but uh, if the, 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 the partner wants to be uh, the, the exclusive for the, for the market, uh, we can sell it for 20,000 per store, uh, three, three, three minimum of three units. We charge as well the, the, the service, the, the royalty fee, that is 10% of gross sales. And, we sell, we charge as well 2% of, for the, for advertisements. Okay, as I told, uh, to get the exclusive minimum that we agreed is to sell three units. Uh, we can have a, a seven years contract uh, minimum, but we, in some cases we can go for 14, 16, depends the kind of project we have in the country. So we are open to receive always uh, feedback from our partners. If the business or the project is, is, is good, we are open to, 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 to make a, an agreement for over seven years, of course. <clears throat> the training that we provide is 10 days, from 10 days to, to 14 days uh, in our headquarters in, in Tokyo or in Hong Kong or another location, uh, it will be done six weeks uh, before the opening of the store. Then we have the on-site training where we're gonna, we, we, we will do it uh, mainly on-site. We can do it for 10 days, but sometimes we, the, the partner asks us to, to do it a little bit longer. So we do it for 30 days, 60 days. We have staff that can stay uh, with our partner for, for, for much more time than, than, than the 10 days. As I told before, as we are uh, open to 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 support our our partner in everything, so we we want a joint venture, we want a, a win-win solution. So we are ready to 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 help our our partner in any any kind of support, marketing support, site selection, selection, operational support, everything. We are doing whatever we can to to be with the, with our partner and to be successful together. And that's all. Thank you so much for for having us. I hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you, uh, Felipe, for the wonderful presentation. You're welcome. Uh, and uh, it was really uh, insightful as well. To understand more about Asari, uh, this beautiful, amazing uh, Japanese brand. I guess now we uh, uh, hand over to Mr. Oji Nakazawa, who is the corporate officer of Chateau Japan, which is a very well-known Japanese pastry uh, concept. Mr. Oji, please. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Oji Nakazawa uh, from Chateau Japan. So uh, as a beginning, I'd like to thank you as a global franchise market, as well as uh, Index Group, to giving us this uh, very precious opportunity to introduce uh, business. 
So let me start my presentation. Uh, yes. So uh, first I would like to start from our overview about, about our company. So uh, if you can see the light, screen, uh, light picture, uh, you can see the most famous mountain, Mount Fuji uh, on the top. And uh, at the bottom, uh, this is where our company located. So uh, we are located in the Yamanashi prefecture uh, in the center of Japan uh, at the Kofu city. And the Chateaulaise have already 66 years old uh, history. We are the uh, biggest Japanese uh, confectionery chain store company. And we are manufacturing all the sweet product and, uh, that we are selling in our shop. And uh, aside uh, confectional business, uh, we are also in our group have wineries or golf or other resort business as well. We have uh, 3,200 uh, employees and we have in total eight factories in Japan uh, uh, not sorry, uh, seven factory in Japan from north to south. And also we have one factory in Netherlands, in Europe. Uh, we have uh, in our group three wineries, uh, golf courses, ski resort and hotel, etc. cetera. Uh, back to one year ago, uh, our sales uh, was uh, 677 million US dollars, but uh, we just closed uh, 2020 fiscal years, and we could make 30% grow, means that our sales, uh, sales uh, became 1 billion US dollars, actually. In Japan, we have uh, 570 uh, outlet shops uh, from north to south, and in overseas, we have close to 100 uh, shops. Uh, this slide shows uh, the growth of our uh, outlets. Uh, in the top right, uh, uh, top left, sorry, uh, in Japan, uh, we have in, we increased in the last five years uh, from 484 shops to 570 shops, which means 20 percent growth. But uh, in the uh, bottom, you can see overseas uh, outlet growth, so four times in these five years. And uh, in the right side, you can see the variety of the product we are uh, manufacturing and selling in our uh, shops. So we have constantly between 400 to 450 variety of the shop. And we try to renew to the new product day by day. So our commitment is making people in this country smile with sweet product. At the bottom, uh, there is a picture about our company Credo, which we try to repeat every day in a meeting. The top priority is satisfaction for customers. Second priority is satisfaction for suppliers. And the third one for employees. So uh, our feature about the sourcing is uh, what we call in factory, a farm to factory concept. We have number of the contracted farm that are supplying fresh product day by day directly to our factory. And we have factory located uh, in the uh, best spring water place in Japan uh, named Hakushu. Uh, maybe some of uh, you already had this name with a famous Japanese whiskey brand, but we are also sourcing our water uh, to cook and produce our uh, product in the same place. So this is some feature about the product. So uh, on the top three picture, you can see that uh, aside the normal product, we are supplying allergy-free, calorie-off, or additive-free product 
which is uh, good for health. But the taste itself is uh, exactly the same as a normal sweet product. And at the bottom, some other product like ice cream using spring water. At the middle, a uh, fresh baked product, which is uh, baked inside our shop. And also uh, at the end, Japanese fruit uh, product, mainly cake uh, using uh, different kind of the seasonal fruit uh, in Japan. We have a very uh, craftsmanship-like uh, method automated uh, process. It means that we are trying to keep uh, handmade craftsman uh, production style, but we just replacing man to machine or robot. We also have a very strict uh, standard for quality and we are uh, totally uh, adapted to the HACCP uh, concept. And we also have uh, ISO certificate like ISO 22000 or ISO 9001. Uh, this slide show uh, about how we uh, stick to uh, the uh, ingredient. Uh, we are getting fresh milk uh, every morning directly from the uh, farm. And we use very low temperature to, uh, for the pasteurization to keep the taste of the original milk. We are also uh, bringing egg as it is in our factory. Uh, and we break in our factory. A lot of uh, food manufacturers try to avoid this method uh, to uh, avoid uh, the bac uh, bacteria to come inside the factory. But we have a total control of our factory. So uh, we are breaking egg and using this fresh egg to our product. The rice also come as cultivated rice come in our factory and we have the rice meal. We are polishing uh, rice in, inside our factory and soon after polish to transform to the uh, product. The red bean also is uh, uh, processed inside our factory as a paste style uh, using this uh, spring water and we transform to our street. So this is uh, uh, a little bit about uh, the concept of our production and uh, how we uh, stick to the, our ingredient. Uh, this slide shows our internal presence. So since 2015, we start overseas development. So actually we have uh, close to 100 uh, outlet in eight countries. We will soon have a nice country, uh, nice country which is China. So uh, if you can see, uh, we have two outlet in UAE, uh, five in Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam. Uh, our biggest uh, overseas market for the moment is Hong Kong with the 44 outlet and the following Singapore with 30 outlet. So uh, in UAE, again, we have two branches and we are focusing uh, Middle East as a next uh, important uh, market after Asia. And of course, as a, a window of uh, whole a Gulf country and the whole Middle East, we choose UAE uh, to start a market. And we are tied up with index holding uh, back to three years ago. The light uh, bottom picture is the first uh, outlet of Chateau in Dubai. And this slide shows second shop 
with the name of Yatsudoki. So Yatsudoki is our premium uh, shop, only located in the selected places uh, in Japan, in the big city like Tokyo in Ginza area. And we selected Dubai as a first overseas Yatsudoki premium shop place in Emirates Mall. And we are actually uh, preparing our factory in Indonesia, who will be able to produce halal certificate product. And uh, soon uh, this factory uh, is entering in the operation. We hope that we can prod, uh, supply halal product from Indonesia and enlarge our operation in whole Middle East. So uh, at the last part is, uh, uh, what is our condition about the franchise? So uh, the conditions to become a franchisee is very simple. So uh, the franchisee applicant should be uh, approved and as a to sharing our management philosophy of Chateraise. And of course, applicants should need some capable fund to open the shop. Uh, the outline, outline of Chateraise agreement is basically, uh, this is a not fixed uh, condition for UA, since we have not yet uh, started a uh, franchise business. But uh, in other country, we, the condition is a three years contract, uh, 540 to 1,600 uh, square feet, depend of the location. And uh, a business hour should be 12 hours, no day close. And uh, one of the, our feature of the business is basically we don't impose any loyalty to the franchisee. The investment for opening cost is uh, like this, right? So uh, as a very beginning of the contract, uh, we uh, ask a deposit around 450,000. And once uh, the franchisee opens the shop, we ask another 45,000 to uh, cover uh, our receivable because we are supplying a uh, product and we giving certain uh, term for the payment. The opening fee we estimate about 4,500. The biggest investment for the franchisee is a uh, construction and the equipment cost, but it's also a uh, very, uh, if this is a standalone uh, construction or this is just the modification of existing uh, place. And on top of this, those uh, investment, we estimate preparation cost around 25,000. Uh, so this is to cover fund for the recruitment of the staff and uh, some announcement at the time of opening. So uh, the step to open a shop. Uh, so our franchisee, of course, starts to consult uh, us or index our partner and makes the interview. Then in normal case, before COVID, uh, we ask a franchisee to visit Japan and visit our office and the factory to know our business and then to close a non-disclosure agreement. And next step is to make the locations survey together and make the planning of the shop. And, the, and once the location is decided, close the franchise agreement and then move for the training of the people and then opening the shop. So this is a, a whole my presentation today. Thank you very much for your attention. So I give back uh, to uh, Imat for the speech.
Thank you very much. Mr. Oji, this is impressive. Uh, we were really shocked with Chateresi uh, business uh, in terms of overall business. We were as well uh, pleasant, I believe, with the uh, presentation in terms of the look and feel of the store, the products that you provide, and the high quality that you always try to keep and implement across the board uh, with your factory and the HACCP certifications that you have. I believe now uh, we will be discussing a bit of the questions that we have received. I will start with Mr. Felipe, uh, uh, some questions to yourself, and then I'll move to Mr. Oji uh, Naka, uh, Nakazawa. Now, Mr. Felipe, uh, what is your plan of expansion, if you allow me to, to ask, in terms of development, uh, Middle East-wise, and then maybe international? Okay, now <clears throat> our main focus is uh, Dubai, of course. And after Dubai, we want to be in Saudi Arabia for Middle East region. That is our main focus today. Uh, when the things get better in Europe, our plan is to, to, to move back to Europe and reopen some stores that we, we have closed. Uh, we believe in June, July this year, we can move forward. Uh, but now our focus, it will be uh, Asia, where Hong Kong, where that got back to normal, so everything is running well. China and Singapore, all the countries around in, in Asia, and Dubai and Saudi Arabia always based in a joint venture with our partners. Amazing, thank you. Uh, another question I might have for you as well from the audience uh, that we received. Um, normally, how long does it take to have a full return on your investment? Okay, as this depends. That depends. That's of course, that depends on the on the investment. If you are talking about a 300 square meter store or 500 square meter store, right? Uh, but mainly uh, the average it will be one year to two years. Uh, the the return of the investment uh, depends on the location, of course. If we are talking about the uh, footfall location, it will be easier, right? But we uh, we mainly to be all, uh, between one year and two years to return of the investment. That's quite impressive. Um, I might have as well some other uh, questions related sure. to Asari. Um, in terms of, you mentioned already in your presentation, the required size that would be all the way from 150 square meter, maybe could reach up to 600. And you mentioned all the fee related in terms of the franchise fee, your agreement, the renewal of the agreements, uh, all of these, which is clear to, to all of us. Mm -hmm. um, but I still have a question related to uh, the market analysis and the benchmark analysis. Mm. So every time you go into a market, I believe you always do a market analysis, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, sure. And you do a benchmark related to the similar businesses that they are out there. And at the same time, you do a pricing structure. Would you uh, enlighten us a bit uh, about this exercise that you have done in the Middle East? Okay, in the Middle East, we, we try to, to, to focus in which kind of concepts similar or to, to, our, to our concept. Uh, it was, it's quite difficult to find some uh, competitors uh, because Azari is a very special concept. I mean, Azari is not only a retail store, it's a concept store with a, with a bookstore, with a coffee store. So it's quite difficult, but we did all the, all the job. What we, we, we did is try to find similar concepts, try to see the prices, try, try to see who are the buyers of the, of the, the product, where we have to be located, in which kind of uh, shopping mall or high street, uh, and everything goes to that direction. Okay. Perfect. Uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, the final question I have for you, uh, Mr. Felipe, in terms of the, uh, the stores, as you mentioned, now uh, uh, the market, when you do the market analysis, I'm pretty sure uh, when you look at Asari brands, uh, uh, sorry, the, uh, the actual brands within Asari, in comparison to the other, which is, do exist in, in UAE, 
uh, have you seen any sort of um, uh, di a direct competitor to you in the sense that you might see a major competitors in, in this region or anywhere in the world? Or you don't okay. think there is any competitors when it comes to- I think, product? you know, there's one competitor for us. There's always a competitor that we can think about that, that is Muji from, from Japan. Uh, Muji is much more traditional brand. We are more focused in uh, happiness. Uh, that's why our designers, they are very young. It's a young generation from Shibuya, from Marajuku, uh, that we get the best design from, from, from this. Era. We want to show the new Japan. We want to show to these kids they can do much better and they can be successful as the, the older generation of wonderful designers from Japan because Japan is really probably one of the best countries for design and for quality of products. So what we did is to get, get that these kids that are the designer, the young generation and made them work with us and bring the new image of Japan. That's why you see very unique products from fashion, to home appliance, all they are very unique and with a very uh, colorful uh, design. But we can compare with Muji because we, this is our, uh, the same kind of products that Muji has is the same products we have. We are a little bit more affordable than, than Muji, uh, but mainly it's, it's this competitor that we can see, we don't see others because the others, they don't, compete in the in the quality and price right so mostly of the concepts that we have in, in in middle east they are not first they are not japanese they are mainly Jap chinese and they are much cheaper than our products or or quality wise uh, different right and final question uh, uh final uh, for you mr felipe uh, you mentioned in the in the presentation you have your own exclusive product. Could you enlighten us with this, just in a in a brief? What do you mean by exclusive product? Well, the, the exclusivity is the the design that we have. Okay, so if you see the shoes that we have, they are exclusive from us. So say we don't we don't buy from other we don't source these kind of products. We design and we produce in our factories, uh, right? So and you can see the the pants. You can see the the. The candles, you see, everything is designed by our designers. So all they are exclusive. And at the same time, we don't sell uh, much uh, quantity inside of the store. So uh, imagine if you buy one shoes like that, you, you are sure that we will sell only 50 shoes like that in that store. So it's a little bit different. It's like a limited edition because every 15 days we change the products. Every 15 days we have new products inside of the store. So this make us make the, the customer coming uh, return very fast to, to the store to spend. That's impressive. Mr. Felipe, uh, I would like to thank you for your time. My pleasure. And for your effort being uh, with us today. Uh, and really it's an impressive story, Asari, uh, this beautiful retail brand in which we're hoping uh, to have it uh, open soon in Dubai and across I the whole so. MENA region. Uh, hopefully. Yes. Thank I you very so. much. Thank you. Thank you now so much. Now I would for like it. to talk to Mr. Nakazawa uh, Oji uh, in regards of the questions that we have received. We have received quite uh, impressive uh, questions for you. Uh, uh, some of them is related to similar to what we discussed with uh, Asari in terms of your goals and objectives, uh, your expansion plan. Could you get, enlighten us as well about your plan of expansion? Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Uh... As you, you may know, Japan is a quite mature country. So uh, also we are still expanding uh, our business in Japan. Uh, the population in Japan is starting to decrease. Last year, four hundred we uh, Japanese population decreased 400,000 people. So uh, if we see the medium or long term ex uh, expansion, Overseas market is the most important uh, strategical field. So uh, we started from Asia, which is our neighbored country. And now we are, I think, uh, believe that we have uh, starting to have a good uh, solid basis in some country in Asia. And then we have to see next step. And the next step should be Middle East. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we, I 
can see about the term of the size of the business. So uh, maybe in uh, five years, uh, in five years, we might have 1,000 outlet in Japan, but maybe we may have 500 outlet in overseas. So it means we have to increase five times more in five times, five in year in overseas business as well. And I guess you are able to do it with, uh, with what you have right now. Since 2015, yeah. you mentioned till date, you managed to have this major expansion plan, which yeah. uh, I believe as well, and we all believe that you are able to attain. Thank you very sure. much. Hope that we can do that, yes. Inshallah. Another question I received uh, and uh, I have in my mind and I received as well from, uh, from uh, uh, the people in joining us. Uh, um, some of the questions they had, when we talk about, for example, the number of units that you managed to talk about in, in, uh, in that you opened, for example, in Singapore or you opened in mm -hmm. Hong Kong, which is around mm -hmm. 30 in Singapore and if I'm not yes. mistaken, 40 plus mm -hmm. in Hong yes, Kong. You are right, yes. mm -hmm. Are all of these company owned unit or franchisable unit? So uh, in Singapore and in Hong Kong, all is franchise uh, outlet, yes. So it's all franchise? All uh, franchise. Are you, do you have similar uh, 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 example like Mr. Philip uh, uh, Asari mentioned to us that they do JV. Uh, some of the audience as well, they are asking, do you do any JV with your franchisees or it's purely franchise? Yes. Uh, the only country that we have JV is Indonesia. So we have a very uh, strong local partner. Uh, we have a good influence in economic and uh, as well in society. And uh, we are getting their help uh, to manage to find a location. And also uh, recently we are actually uh, setting up a production company and uh, they are giving a great support to us. Mm -hmm. But aside the joint venture style, we have a partner like Index in Dubai, who is uh, more than a uh, franchisee. So they are the real partner to develop the country together. Even we don't have a capital uh, relationship, uh, we have this uh, partnership to develop together the region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great to hear. What is the minimum requirement that you look for uh, when you sell, uh, for example, a franchise? Meaning, if I want to buy from you a franchise for, let's say, uh, Saudi Arabia, just to name a uh, country, or Egypt, what is the minimum requirement that uh, Chateaurese uh, look for uh, from their partner in terms of capital fund and in terms of minimum number of units? Mm -hmm. So uh, if we start about the uh, turnover that we are expecting per shops, so uh, we expect minimum 1 million US dollars sales a year. Hopefully, I think in the country like Dubai, we can go 2 million and maybe more. So this is a, a, to give you the idea of the size of business that we're accepting per shops. Mm. And uh, so uh, in Japan, we are, uh, our shop is selling 400, 400 uh, items per shop, but we are not able to supply to overseas whole range of the product. But at the minimum, uh, we, we are able to, uh, to supply at least half of the products that we are selling in Japan. And uh, on top of this half of the product, we are trying to add uh, uh, the product specialized for the overseas market, like mm -hmm. halal product for Middle East. Uh, but one more question uh, uh, that I need maybe some uh, some more information. Sorry, I know it's too late for you now. It's in Japan just to inform <laughs> no, you. It's don't really going to be midnight <laughs> soon. <keep> my <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my, 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 my question would be, uh, uh, Mr. Nakazawa, is yes. um, 
what's the minimum number? For example, if I come and I tell you, I noticed that the minimum number required per store is a million uh, uh, USD and above. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'm talking about the number of outlets. Will you have any uh, restriction for someone to come and say, well, I want to open in Saudi Arabia, for example, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and uh, I want to become your franchisee. Will you allow them to become a franchisee uh, uh, based on one unit, or they have to have multiple of stores within your agreement, or how it works? Uh, this is the same area, either in Japan or overseas. Uh, just one outlet is enough to start. Mm. We don't want people to say five, 10 from the beginning. Okay. We want first outlet to be successful and then go graduate to it to the second and third one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if you allow me a final question, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what is the, in your opinion, similar to why we asked Asari, in your particular uh, uh, background and your particular uh, uh, track record in your business, uh, how, 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 how much is the expected uh, uh, ROI, return on investment, uh, that mm -hmm. your business generates uh, as an average? Normally, normally we are expecting all our franchisees to uh, get return of the investment within three years. Mm -hmm. No more. Okay, perfect. And mm -hmm. uh, a final question as well. I know I wanted to say every time a final, but I forget to ask you more and more since we're receiving as well from the audience. Um, for example, when you go to market, do you anticipate of opening your own factory in the Middle East since you are aiming to sell more franchises in this region? Are you aiming to open a factory here? Yes, uh, of course, in future, if we have uh, enough size of the business in Middle East, we are aiming, we will uh, certainly uh, open factory. But uh, our business is uh, not needs a big factory from the beginning. Mm. Maybe we can start a uh, minimum size of the, uh, not real factory, but uh, a shop with oven who can bake the product. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not efficient, but it can produce like a normal, patissier shop, some cake. Mm -hmm. So we can start with a small size of product with a limited uh, product and go to the big factory like we have in Japan. Okay, because the product, I presume it comes uh, from Japan frozen product, right? They just have to bake it or semi-frozen or how it is? So uh, for actually for overseas, this is all frozen product, mm -hmm. which defrost in each country, mm -hmm. it could be semi-ready product which mm -hmm. uh, cooked or completed in the shop. Uh -huh. Perfect. Or it could be the final uh, product itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any, any further questions. Uh, I believe we covered a beautiful and amazing session. Uh, with Mr. Oji uh, Nakazawa. Uh, it was a great pleasure and a privilege to meet you uh, over uh, this webinar, along with Mr. Felipe. Uh, Mr. Felipe is the uh, CEO again uh, for Asari, uh, which is uh, a lifestyle retail brand. I thank you both gentlemen for, uh, for being with us. Uh, and uh, now I would like to inform that uh, we will be having uh, the next month topic. It's going to be concentrated on the boutique and fitness trends and opportunities. Uh, it's going to be held on the 18th of May, uh, 2021. I really appreciate all the effort you guys put in this uh, webinar. I am really, again, excited that I had the privilege to be part of uh, this webinar with you. And surely we will have a great success moving forward along with Mr. Naka and Nakazawa and with Mr. Felipe. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. You. Thank you for Thank everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye -bye. Thank you. Have a nice evening too. Bye bye. All right.